All right, everybody, this is Mike Anuzzi over at musicaccelerator.com, and we are on the line with a great friend of mine. She is the coordinator for ASI programs at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. She has been responsible for bringing big shows to Cal Poly, including the Chainsmokers, Ex Ambassadors, Matt Carney. She has helped to build careers of up and coming bands, putting them in front of college uh, demographic i'd like to introduce to you missy bullock everybody missy bullock missy how are you doing today i'm great how are you i am doing so good it is so cool hearing you you guys she has been such a great friend of mine and big support and uh i really appreciate you taking your time today to do this so um missy i want to kind of just uh get right into it and ask you what got you started in events programming I, when I was in college, I did a lot of programming with my peers at that time, college students. So that's kind of what um, spurned the interest and kept me going. So I was able to have a career opportunity lead me down that path as well. So I, I took it. And that's where it all began in my college career. But then I got to keep going in my professional career as well. That is so cool. And you have had yeah. several years of experience working at Cal Poly in the position that you're doing and doing all kinds of other stuff in the city of San Luis Obispo and, and really bringing a lot of great people together and great events to the Cal Poly uh, University. So that is awesome. Missy, right. I kind of want to direct this conversation more towards the musical background. And I just have a couple questions for you. We'll keep this one short today. Um, what kind of things do you look for in a band when you are planning your events? Well, when I am programming for college students, so I have to keep that in mind. And it's all about the college demographic and what they're interested in. So we do a lot of surveying of students to make sure we know what genres they're into and what kind of music they want. So it's not really my choice, per se. Um, I get the ultimate decision, but we do really just program what students want. I think that's really interesting, especially for bands that are trying to target different colleges. I think that the bands really have to understand the demographic of the university or of the students involved in it, just knowing where their music is going to fit best. And I guess that kind of overlaps with other venues as well. Um, that is great advice, Missy. Uh, I, I want to ask you just real quick, and I know this varies from school to school as well. How many shows a year are you guys doing? Or how many shows do you include live bands at per year? It's probably 10 to 12 all said and done. We do a lot of different kinds. So we'll do large scale concerts with multiple artists all the way from a daytime show with just one artist to acoustic sets where we just have an acoustic guitarist playing near our coffee shop. So it, it varies in style, um, but I would say around a dozen a year. Wow, that's that's actually for an artist that's trying to break through into the college world. Um, and like I said earlier, it does vary, but there is a lot of competition. So it is very tough to narrow down, I guess, the... Uh, the uh, correct artist for the correct event. And I think that just uh, shows that the artist really needs to do their research before even reaching out to the university to perform at. Sound about right? Right, exactly. And, you know, it's all about timing. The timing that we are doing our programming or our planning has to be in line with when they're actually reaching out as well as when they're available. So a lot of times... People are touring in the summer, and we don't have any availability during those times. So that a lot of things have to line up for it to be right. Um, but the other thing that we do here is really showcase a lot of student work. So we want to showcase student artists as well. We do a lot of student bands, especially at that daytime uh, weekly show. And the acoustic artists a lot of times are student performers. So we like to showcase students to students. That is so great to support your local community, support your local artists that are that are deeply involved. In, and uh, as a local artist, I think that that has been such a big support of, of my career as well. You know, I kind of want to touch on that as well. Um, for, for artists that are planning these shows, how far in advance are you booking? 
we're booking at least three months out. And for our bigger shows, it's even farther. So I would say like five to six months. I, w- I would assume, and from my experience as well, I think that is about the the absolute most common three to six months kind of planning far ahead. So it is something yeah. important that, you know, on both ends, as artists, they need to understand that, that you are planning your events super far in advance. So, Missy, a couple more questions. What kind of capacities are your, uh, are your venues that artists do showcase in? Um. So, like I said, we do a lot of different styles. So the acoustic series is probably the smallest, and it's really just a small set of tables that the artist is in front of, but it's a lot of walk-through and pass-through traffic. Um, Also, you know, you get the traffic at the coffee shop. So that's more of a a pass-through kind of an event. We also have an outdoor plaza area that's um, an amphitheater style, and that capacity, I mean... Our weekly shows pull maybe 250 to 300 people plus walking through traffic. But then we've had artists in there in the evening time that have pulled 2,000. So it's a really variable. That location is really easy because it, it expands. You know, it doesn't have any walls or gates. So That sounds like a lot open, of fun. Open-ended. Yeah, that one is really fun. And then our largest venue is at our recreation center, and it's actually a gym. But the capacity there is 3,500. And I would have to say that it is one of my favorite college campuses for live music, for for any programming on board, for anybody that's never been to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, they definitely need to check out this gem. It is such a beautiful campus. I'm so honored to be an alumni as well as you are an alumni of Cal Poly yeah, San true. Luis Obispo. It is so cool keeping this together. A couple more questions, Missy. What events do you have coming up that you're super excited about? Uh, Actually, this quarter we have the biggest events ahead of us. So we have an event called Mustang Mile, and it is a 5K, but it also includes some musical entertainment. We like to put that entertainment out on the route for people. So there's a DJ about the middle of the 5K route for people to just get pumped back up and finish their run with. And then... There is a band at the start-finish, so when they cross the finish line, the band is there to celebrate with them, and there's free food and a celebration along those lines. And then there is a concert that we've named Spring Stampede, and this will be the second one that we've done. Congratulations. It's an an outdoor festival-style show with three artists. And that one's our largest event of the year. We expect about 5,000 students. Uh, I didn't mention that venue. That's another venue that we have. It's an open field. Right. So, I mean, the capacity, we don't even know what it is. It could be tens of thousands. Um, But we're expecting about 5,000 at this show. And actually, what was really exciting about this one this year, the students came up with the Battle of the Bands. So, again, showcasing student bands, we had five student bands compete to be an opener at that Spring Stampede concert. So that's a really cool opportunity for a student band to get out there and get their name kind of out, and then they can showcase, hey, I opened for this large artist. Absolutely. So what a great opportunity. Yeah. We're excited about that one. Missy, one more thing. Do you have any advice for artists or bands that are trying to contact or trying to get their music in the college network? trying to perform shows on campus? Um, I think something that we touched on already is just knowing the demographic and what the students like. Um, So it varies from college and region and, you know, all of that. So pretty much um, knowing the kind of music that college students like is going to get you in the door a little bit easier, especially for us because we ask the students, like I said. So if they don't like it, the artist isn't coming here. That's just the bottom line. Absolutely. Um, So being in touch with that, if they want to be in a college zone, they need to know what college students like. Also, just like I said, the timing. It's a matter of being in the right time in the right place. So if that didn't work out the first time, find out what that time is and contact us back. There are so many artists out there, like you said, reaching out, trying to get into the market. And it's, it's a matter of timing. So they just have to be persistent 
but also appropriate. Right. That is that is such great advice, Missy. You know, um, like I said earlier, Missy and I have known each other for several years. She's been a big support to what I do in music, and I really appreciate you taking your time out today to sharing your experience with all of us here today, Missy. Thank you. No problem. It was my pleasure. It was fun. Oh, thank you so much. I look forward to uh, catching up with everybody once again soon. My name is Mike Anuzzi at musicaccelerator.com. We'll see you again next time.